Hi, my name is Kiki. Hi, my name is Ramira. My name is Destiny. And I'm Kylie. And during our summer of 2013 at SPNN, we went on a field trip to a place called Eureka Recycling. They focus on reducing, reusing, and recycling. While we were there, we spoke with Megan Cool Stennis, the Zero Waste Educational Manager. Uh, my name is Megan Cool Stennis. I work for Eureka Recycling. I am our Zero Waste Education Manager. An average St. Paul household wastes about $96 a month on what previously could have been eaten food. Um, so that is a justice issue. We shouldn't be wasting that much food in, in, a, in a world where um, we have abundance, but there are also people still going hungry. We don't need um, any magical or, or new technology uh, to keep us from getting to zero waste. We can get there now. It's just about the, the will of the people. One thing that we wanted to learn more about was where our food comes from. So Megan explained the cycle of food production. A lot of our food kind of is grown in really large scale farms, is processed, is put in big supermarkets, is hopefully eaten. Any food scraps are put in the landfill or incinerator. In an ideal situation, um, our food is grown from local farms, um, sold in either local small markets or farmers markets. People take that home, cook the food, compost their food scraps, and then that dirt becomes our food again. It goes back to these local farms and is used to nourish the soil to grow good local healthy food. Local food is, you don't have to transport it as far, so it uh, lasts longer usually, it tastes better, usually there's better nutrients in it. So from the zero waste perspective, I think food justice uh, depends a lot on um, making sure that uh, everyone has access to that locally grown food and everyone has access to be able to compost their, their food scraps. Everyone being able to um, have a space to grow food if they want it, I think is also really important in terms of food justice. I think I have a lot of hope and there's a lot of really um, great people doing a lot of great work in the world. And I think there's gonna be um, some powerful social movements that will change the way we're, we're consuming and, and even eating and driving and all that kind of stuff right now, I have to hold out hope <laughs> for that. At Eureka, we learned a lot of different things about waste and how that relates to food. We wanted to learn more, so we went to an organization called Tamales E B C Coletas and asked Jose Luis some questions. Two women walked by earlier, and four months ago, they would have walked by an empty lot full of cars and trash. But today they walk by and see a very small but a, about to grow community garden. So our organization is called Tamales and Bicicletas. And Tamales and Bicicletas is an organization that tries to address issues of environmental food justice. And so we engage Latino communities to, as you can see behind us, reclaim space to engage Latino youth to awaken the hope that they carry in their hearts and their spirits through gardening, through food justice, through environmental justice. I believe this work started with my father teaching me the importance of growing your own food. Uh, my parents grew up in Mexico uh, in an adobe home, not a wood home, but a home made out of mud. Um, they grew their own food, they have their own cows, and they live what they call now sustainable. So that's, uh, I guess it started as a child. One thing we asked Jose about was how come we don't see a lot of black people farming? He gave us some pretty interesting answers. Why is there a lot of African American yeah. black people involved in growing their own food? And I would I would argue that the history of food agriculture is based on the African American experience in this country. Whether we're talking about slavery, 500 years of free labor, and what we are seeing and what we're learning is that there's a historical trauma around food. My father was part of the last generation of the Brasero program. So the United States pretty much convinced Mexico to send immigrants to come work the fields. So my father was treated literally like a slave. They transported him on trains, get him off trains in the middle of the night, surrounded with armed guards, butt naked. Throw, they would throw uh, mosquito killing powder on their bodies. So the, the trauma that my father experienced is why I exist in this country, meaning that that was his way to uh, stabilize uh, citizenship here in this country. And that's where I was born, I was born here in this country.
You ask Latinos, why aren't you growing your own food? Why aren't you having a crack? Have you ever picked tomatoes for 18 hour shifts under the sun with your back bend over? And the fact they're paying you 10 cents a basket. And when you say, hey, come grow food with us, they say, slow down. So there's a trauma we have to address. Historical trauma around relationships to slavery, exploitation, white supremacy, just related to food, and the exploitation of human beings, those currently right now, immigrants, refugees, that are bring our food to our tables today. I'll tell you the future of where food's gonna come from. Food's gonna come from right here. What the future looks like is it's gonna be this. After visiting Tamales EBC Cleto's, we went to another place called Project Sweetie Pie. Project Sweetie Pie's goal is to teach you some business skills and to create a greener North Minneapolis. We spoke with one of the organizers, Michael Cheney, who introduced us to some of the youth and other partners that worked in the gardens. Now that's good eating. Well, Project Sweetie Pie, we're a, a training program for youth in horticulture, entrepreneurship, marketing, and promotions. So Project Sweetie Pie is really about making a greener um, North Minneapolis. We hear all this rhetoric that it takes a village to raise a child. So we d came up with Project Sweetie Pie as a, a model that we could demonstrate to the world how a community came together to support the youth of its community. This very spot, in 1940s, 50s, and 60s was the epicenter of North Minneapolis. There were businesses up and down this street. And then during the riots in 1967, those buildings were burnt down and many people left and we had vacant lots all up and down North Minneapolis here. To grow food, of course, takes land. Uh, North Minneapolis, there's 1,800 empty lots in North Minneapolis. And so we're trying to take over these lots and turn them into, um, into gardens. So this is what's called a food desert, where it's really hard to get food. And the other thing is that if you did go to a store, you probably wouldn't find fresh vegetables. You'd find canned vegetables and processed foods because they have a really long shelf life. Food justice means that people have a right to clean whole food that's not full of toxins. And it means that we can be not only consumers of food, we not, not only have to buy our food, but we can produce our food. You know, a long time ago, you have, used to have uh, individual farmers. Now you've got some corporate folks who run farms. We don't know what they put in the ground. Uh, as, as, as this stuff comes up and so we want good food for everybody and uh, so that's that's what food justice means to me today we're at caramel garden we've had we got to come weed between the rows and we have to water after everything is all done for the farms we do a lot of weeding because that's what we basically do. We water and put like wood chips around the plant to absorb the water. Greens, bell peppers, banana peppers, uh, tomatoes, and basil. And a little bit of rosemary. Yeah, it changed a lot of my eating habits. Cause when I left Mississippi, I started eating a lot of fast food like McDonald's. And now that I started back gardening, I don't eat so much fast food. I really personally like the message that it sends, like living in this neighborhood, you know, it's generally a low income community. And so for you to look across the street and see a garden, like that's, that's pretty empowering. We get to decide and shape how we want our community to look. North Minneapolis is going green. Give us a call and learn what we mean. Where once lie urban blight, now sits luscious garden sites. Gardens without borders, classrooms without walls. Architects of our own destinies, access to food, justice for all. We learned a lot on this journey to make this documentary. We even learned about what zero waste and what composting means. We even met some compost worms along the way. We learned about where our food comes from and what people in the community are doing to make our cities greener. We visited urban farms and learned about food justice. After we were done filming at 
project Sweetie Pie, we ended up helping a bit in the gardens, which was fun. Thanks to all the people that participated in this and made this documentary a success.